there is a question that comes up in tabletop RPG spaces and seems to never go away. The question being, how do I make my players interact with the lore? There are many videos and blog posts on the question, but I want to answer it specifically through the lens of playing in pre-existing settings. Specifically, my favorite game. Warhammer Old World lore is amazing. It has everything. The Empire, Bretonia Knights, Chaos Demons, Skaven, Lizard People! Weird things that live in the forest, desperate people turning to the occult, apocalyptic atmosphere of late medieval Europe. Warhammer gives the conscious and unconscious fears of the common people a physical form. By the way, this channel will be mostly about Warhammer Fantasy roleplay, as I am a kinda one-system guy. If you're not into that, still stick around. This video and many others on here will be system neutral, so you will still get something interesting or useful for your games. There is a word that is used for all of this information in Warhammer community and beyond. Fluff. Something written on the sidelines of the rules that provides some atmosphere as well as context for the struggles of the players at the table. And while I don't really like this term, all this stuff is really just fluff. A lot of people in Warhammer community do basically ignore all of that. They don't give a damn about the intricacies of drama that spans millennia and just want to play a game. I didn't pay a fucking fortune for this plastic toy soldiers to listen to your ramble about Magnus the Red not being a traitor. Roll the damn dice, Alex! But what about roleplaying? You can't really ignore the world because you're playing in a one. World building is important to how we play these games in this day and age. And why play Warhammer Fantasy roleplay if you're not planning to world build? And really, it's impossible. The world and its reality are interwoven into mechanics of the game. Deadly fights, insanity, dangerous magics, rat catchers and small dogs. Ugh, horrible things. But let me get one thing straight. Lore is not writing. Matt Colville, who is a great DM and a YouTuber that I'm pretty sure you're aware of, said a very important thing in one of his videos discussing world building. The reason you are hooked on DMing has nothing to do with the reason they are hooked on playing. You may really like the world building. You may really like the challenge and sp spending hours at home drawing maps and coming up with names and, and NPCs and orders of knights and the history of your world. You may love that, but that has nothing to do with the thing the players have showed up for. The players have showed up to roll dice and push lead. The players want to kick down doors and kill orcs, right? So the trick is, and this is the subject of this video, how to take all that nonsense that you've come up with that I think anybody can do. Anybody can come up with the nonsense. The trick is then presenting it in front of the players in a dramatic way. Well, what does it mean and how do I do that, you may ask? Make law serve your purposes as a GM or a player and not the other way around. Don't try sticking as close as possible to the books as if it is some sort of sacred script. Find things that you think is cool and put it in your game. Don't bombard people with stories, make them play through those stories. Make the players stumble into a cult that worships a strange and bloodthirsty god, or get down into the sewers to avoid the city guard to make them face the horrors that lurk in the shadows. There is enough there in the old world that you and your friends will find cool, so go ahead and have fun. These are your toys. But there is another thing that you can do with the lore. It is to remind players, through the game, that this world is real. The mere existence of that huge wiki gives you, as a GM, a weapon. Legitimacy. You are able to present your adventure as something that exists in time and space. That village that you're in can be found on the map. That language that you speak is spoken by a specific nation. The perils that the heroes are facing has context in the wider world. The world that you are playing in is real. How does one give context to everyday adventuring? Well, try drawing from the history of the world. The great war against chaos, the crusades, old emperors and their deeds, or the events that are ongoing, like the invasion of Archeon, to provide a perspective on the actions of players. 
The work of the GM is not to create worlds and genealogies of noble houses and hope players will start asking questions. It is to put the players right in the middle of it and give them an adventure. In my games, there is usually one, two people in a group that go and read stuff on their own. But the drama and the context usually engages everyone at the table at the same time. Let me tell you a little story. I wanted to tell my players a story of Marienburg, a giant trading cosmopolitan port that is run not by blood right, but by trading families. For the context, it was my Norska game, where the players are three literal Vikings and one Kurgan shaman. So what did I do? I made it a story about a man, Johanan Post. A man was involved in shady dealings, not in any important way, but as a pawn in a greater game that goes far up to one of the richest families of the city, one of the members of the directorate. But Johanan was found out, and the people who were interested in getting the family out of the directorate and taking their place wanted the men alive to question, forge documents and stir the pot enough to make the family the man worked for too exposed and either leave or pressure the rest of the directors to make them leave. My players were hired by the people who were working with Johanan before, but he disappeared without a trace. So they were hunting down Johan Post, completely oblivious about the whole situation with the families, for two sessions all over the city, meeting all sorts of characters, while finally getting to the man himself. They got the payment and the deal was kept, but the poor Johanan was arrested, framed for a bunch of crimes on a false pretense, and was hanged in a public square with people cheering this on. After the players learned what was going on behind the scenes, they felt very different things. One of the players, Vera, said that it is a shame that it happened like that, while another, Max, responded by saying, we should not fiddle with the politics of Marienburg. Their business is their business. We got what we were hereafter, and that's what's important. Do you see what happened then? Not only I succeeded in making Vera pity Johanan, but I also made the setting work for storytelling purposes. The other player responded with law, universe, infused motivation. He didn't want to play Marienburger's games. PCs were aliens in this world, barbarians in the city, outsiders that bumped into a political game that was unraveling in front of their eyes, and each reacted and gauged in a different way. This is when I knew I succeeded in doing what I set out to do. The shaman player, by the way, had more fun making friends with Beaky, a resident pelican at Pelican Perch Tavern. And that's cool. By the way, Beaky and Pelican Perch is also in the law. They're canon. The tavern is even mentioned in Felix and Gotrick. And my player engaged with the law by feeding Beaky and sharing a drink with them. Yeah, it's, it's also canon. Beaky is like very into drinking beers that are left unattended and like shaman basically shared a drink with the pelican don't think it's healthy for a bird don't get your birds beers but yeah that's canon look it up it's pretty cool in conclusion use law to set the scene use law to give context use law to create drama use law don't let the lore use you thank you very much for checking out this video I will be producing more stuff, I will be talking a lot more about lore, I have a lot of stuff planned for the future. This is my first attempt at this, so I'd appreciate some feedback and support. Um, share this video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, press the bell for notifications, and by the way, to make the deal a bit more sweeter, know that I'm basically sitting on a giant stash of like Warhammer fantasy roleplay materials um it's tons and tons of pdfs and i'm willing to share them with you so i'm including the link to pdf that i used as a resource book for my marienburg games it's a giant pdf that is impossible to read as an actual book it basically is all sorts of locations and characters that were mentioned by official sources after the release of the first uh rule book i'm actually not sure if they include the so, yeah, it's just basically a compendium of characters and cool places and um, all sorts of different stuff. 
Um, so to give you some cool stuff from the get-go, I love the character Hassan. Uh, I use him in almost every game in Marienburg, but I sort of expanded him, making him like a fixer, and uh, if you need something in a city, if you need something to, you know, to buy something or to get rid of something, you must find Hassan. He has connections all over the old world. So, check out the PDF and DM me if you found it useful, if you enjoyed it. And yeah, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, EML Eugene on everywhere. Have a nice one. Bye-bye.